Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Nick Tan Chats, my magic and mostly mentalism review show. My name is Nick Tan, and in today's episode, we'll be taking a look at Divine and Conquer, put out by Leo Reed and Penguin Magic. So hi guys, uh, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Nick Tan Chats. As always, just a quick minute to thank all my subscribers out there. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel, thank you so much for your support. You know, it's really not easy, uh, I have found out, it's not easy to be uh, putting out these YouTube review videos for you guys with you know, regularity of any kind, but the support thus far has been incredible. I thank you all again and it really motivates me to continue putting out these videos for you uh, whenever I can. So if you guys are new to the channel, if this is your first time here, uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, please have a look around, look at the other magic review videos that I've done. And if you like what you see, if you've gotten value out of my videos, please uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, because, you know, by subscribing, uh, it really tells me that you guys uh, enjoy watching my videos and you want to watch more. So today, we're going to be looking at uh, Divine and Conquer by Leo Reed and it's released with Penguin Magic. So what is the effect of Divine and Conquer? Right, I'll just tell you what happens during the effect. So the effect is as follows. Uh, you have two spectators and you spread out a deck of cards, you know, face, facing the, the spectators. You have one spectator just think of a card that they can see. You have another spectator, again, think of a, another card that you can see, a different card from the first spectator. The deck is then squared up and tabled. And now through a, a process of some kind, you are able to quickly verbally name uh, one of the spectator's cards. And then for the second spectator's card, you claim that you will be making the card vanish from the deck. So, magic moment. Uh, you claim that the card is gone. You then hand the cards, the deck, face up to the spectator. They can deal down the cards one by one, uh, face up, and uh, they will only count 51, and uh, their thought of card is not there. You can then very cleanly remove the thought of card from your pocket. All right, so that is the effect uh, of uh, Divine and Conquer. It is a two-person routine. Uh, let's talk about what you get inside the box. So the box comes like this, all right? It's just a very nice looking box. Inside the box, of course, on the, on the lid, you will get the link to the instructional video. Uh, the instructional video runs for about an hour and a half. Uh, and taking you through the whole instructional video is actually uh, Nick Lucapo. Now I must say that this is the first time, this is the first tutorial that I'm watching uh, featuring uh, Nick Lucapo, all right? But I must say that uh, I was, it was a very nice experience. Everything was very well taught, uh, very easy to understand. I think Nick is a great teacher. And on the tutorial video, he'll take you through everything you need to know about the Divine and Conquer deck, uh, how to set it up, uh, how to practice, you know, all the things you need to know, how to perform with it. He'll give you uh, tips as well. And also, uh, right at the end of the video, there is also a performance uh, of Divine and Conquer by Dan Harlan as well. Right, so in addition, inside the box, obviously, you will get the, the deck, okay? The Divine and Conquer deck, there's nothing much I can say about this deck and nothing much I can show you as well with, without revealing too much, all right? But I can tell you that uh, the deck comes with a couple of extra cards, okay? A couple of extra cards which you use for the, for the review. Uh, it's obviously a gaffed deck, all right? It's a gaffed deck, but it's a specially printed gaff and it's, you know, it's printed on bicycle quality cards, okay? So um, they will feel very familiar to you immediately. They, they handle exactly like a deck of cards. Uh, and, and that's it, okay? So that's all I can tell you about the deck without revealing too much. But I will actually at this point in time compare and contrast this to another effect, uh, another deck of cards which I used to use uh, many years ago, uh, the, the Mind Power deck, okay? So I'm gonna take you through a couple of differences because you know, many of you, obviously all of you who are watching this video, you don't have the Divine and Conquer deck yet, but the Mind Power deck has been out for many years, all right? So there's a high chance that most of you will know of the method or you have one, you know, it's in your repertoire or uh, you have played with it before, all right? So I'm gonna use it and then I think that's a good springboard for me to talk about uh, Divine and Conquer and from there I think you'll be able to make a decision as to whether Divine and Conquer is for you or not. Also, I do apologize because there is a light, a light bulb that is flickering in my living room so you might see some strange uh, lighting changes from time to time. So let's talk a little bit about the Mind Power deck, all right? The Mind Power deck released many years ago by um, John Kennedy and Tim, Tim Conover. So the effect of the Mind Power deck is as follows, all right? You have a spectator, uh, you spread the cards out on the table, you have a spectator look down and they are to think of any one card that they can see, 
All right, so they think of a card, uh, you then take them through a very simple process, okay, and then you can review their thought of card. You then, taking it a step further, you can then uh, make the, the card vanish, okay, so you then respread the cards, they uh, look down and they see that uh, their card is no longer present in the deck, and then from there, you can, you know, remove the card from your pocket. So the effect is very similar to, to the second phase of, of Divine and Conquer, all right? But I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the differences uh, in, in the decks and uh, what you can do with one and compare them a little bit, all right? So first of all, I'm going to talk about the, the selection procedure, okay? The selection procedure for, the, for both of these decks, all right? The, for the Mind Power deck, traditionally, typically rather, the, the selections are done like that, all right? So the, the cards are spread on the table, and the spectators are asked to think of, of, a, of one of these cards that they can see. You can also spread the cards out this way toward the spectator and have them think of a card. Okay, so this kind of a you know, handling is also possible with the Mind Power deck. The Divine and Conquer decks, you could do the same thing. You could spread the cards out onto the table, have them think of a card that they can see, um, but of course it is it is taught like this. Okay, so you are again doing doing it this way, handling the cards this way, and having two spectators think of a card each. Okay, so uh, card selection wise, both of them can be handled uh, in a similar way. So once you get the card selected, you, well, let's talk a little bit about how you get the cards. Okay, the, the method to get the cards. Uh, both of the methods are you know, extremely similar. Obviously, there is going to be some memory work uh, involved, all right, but uh, it's nothing too difficult. I think if you have, you know, if you really commit yourself to performing this effect, it won't be too difficult. You just need to memorize uh, some things. And then from there, uh, you've got to learn the strategy to kind of um, figure out the thought of cards. And this kind of a method is more or less identical for both of these decks, okay, the Mind Power or the Divine and Conquer deck. Now on the tutorial video for Divine and Conquer, Nick Lucapo actually you know, teaches you the whole script uh, as to how to work out the cards, but I, I think that if you are a, an experienced mentalist, an experienced performer, you will have your own kind of preferences for what to say and the kind of beats to use. Uh, so that you can, you know, kind of maneuver and narrow down and zero in on the, the thought of cards. So right now, uh, I'm going to talk about the biggest difference, uh, in my opinion, that the, the Mind Power deck uh, has versus the, the, the Divine and Conquer deck. Okay, the biggest difference is in the vanish of the thought of card. For the Mind Power deck, okay, you effect the vanish like this, you spread the cards out, uh, the spectator then looks down and then, you know, you can spread the cards, you go through the cards in a ribbon spread, and then they can verify that their card is, is not there. They cannot handle the deck. Okay, so for the Mind Power deck, they cannot handle the deck. Uh, they cannot deal through the cards one by one. Uh, the cards have to be viewed in this fashion, right, in a ribbon spread. Uh, they will just look down and just verify that, yeah, they don't see their card there anymore. Okay, so that's the Vanish for the Mind Power deck. The Vanish for the... Divine and Conquer deck, however, uh, you could also, I mean, spread the cards like that in a similar way and just have them look through and see that their card is not there. But I think the real strength of the Divine and Conquer deck is you can hand them the cards face up like that. And then they can deal down the cards like that, one by one. All right, so they can deal through uh, and they can count along as well. Okay, so they can deal through the cards, they can count along as well they will see that their card is, is not there, okay? And the beauty is, the beauty of this is along the way, because there are two people who have thought of cards, right? So you've reviewed the first one. Along the way, the first spectator's card will be seen amongst these cards. So they will deal through uh, the whole deck like that. They will count along as well. And when they get to the end, it's only 51 cards. Okay, so the illusion of, of that particular card vanishing is very strong because it really it happens in the spectator's hands. There is a tactile confirmation, all right, because they can verify that there are only 51 cards left. There is also a visual confirmation as well because they have just looked through the cards and they see that their card is not there. So the vanish of the card is, is very strong in, in this particular deck. All right, so we've talked about the, the selection procedure for both decks. Uh, we've talked about getting the information from both decks. We've talked about the vanish. 
let's talk a little bit about the distribution of, of the cards or making the cards appear from the pockets, all right? Now, using the Mind Power deck, there's quite a bit of pocket management uh, to, to handle, okay? Because there are quite a number of, of things that you need to, to have uh, on you. That can be a bit tricky if, uh, you know, pocket space is, is a bit of an issue for you. However, for the Divine and Conquer deck, uh, that is actually cut down by half. Okay, that's all I can I can say. It's cut down by half because you are only able to make the second spectator's card vanish. Okay, so two spectators are involved, but only one spectator's card will vanish. The other spectator's card will still be seen to be present in the deck. So in, in this case, the pocket management is slightly easier. All right, you don't have to worry about that many things. I would like to point out to you that um, while it is a very simple, all right? It's a very simple method. The part that you need to practice is the part where you get, you work out the, the thought of cards, all right? Because it takes some experience to actually get comfortable with it. So if you are totally new to this sort of method, uh, it's gonna take you a little bit of work to become confident with it, okay? So first of all, there is memory work involved, all right? So once you commit what you need to commit to memory, uh, then comes the part where you need to practice working out what you have memorized, okay, in the heat of performance. And this is not something that you can practice without a spectator, I think, uh, for it to be realistic. You do need to have actual performance experience to get good with it, all right? So that being said, uh, I wouldn't worry about like memorizing every single shall we say scenario, okay, 100%, because in actual performance, it will come to you quite logically, uh, assuming you are familiar with the what you have had to memorize. Also for the Divine and Conquer deck, there is gonna be some reset uh, involved, okay, because you have a spectator actually deal through the cards, so in, in which case the order of the cards have been reversed, so obviously the reset does involve you you know, reversing the whole deck again because the cards need to be kept in uh, the same order for every single performance. Okay, so next is a small point that I've made before uh, about effects being repeatable. Okay, so for some magicians, that is an important point, you know. Uh, people ask, you know, if, can you repeat the effect for the same audience? And again, to me, and I've mentioned this before in a previous video, to me, that's not an issue, all right, because I hardly ever perform the same effect for the same people, all right, because for the groups of people, the same group of people that I perform for, I hardly ever perform the same effect twice. And for professional work, if I'm performing for different groups of people, I only ever perform one effect once as well. So I, I hardly ever repeat an effect. So to me, it's not an issue, but I suppose if you are maybe a, a resident restaurant magician and people do come to see you, you know, more than once, then that could be an issue. Uh, but for this effect, you cannot repeat the effect for the same person. You probably could get away with it like twice, um, but I wouldn't do it more than that. Otherwise, you know, they start kind of sussing out the method somehow. Also, another point to note is that for the Divine and Conquer deck, um, while well, I did mention that the Mind Power deck cannot be handled by a spectator, and you've seen that the Divine and Conquer deck can be handled by a spectator, there has to be audience management involved, okay? Because, you know, you have to, you're handling a gaffed deck to, to a spectator, okay? So you do need to pick your moment. The strength of the routine is that they can deal through the cards, but that is also, I think, to me, the riskiest part of the routine because if you choose the wrong spectator or if your instructions are not clear enough and if they don't do exactly what you need them to do, uh, things can go wrong very, very quickly, all right? So you do need audience management when handing them the deck. If you're not comfortable, um, you could just deal the cards yourself and verbally count through the through the cards, all right? But I think that's a bit of a waste uh, because the strength of this particular method is that they can handle the cards and they can count the cards themselves and verify that the thought of card is missing. It's just a funny point. I just realized that uh, for the mind power deck, there's some there's memory work involved, but I just realized that I forgot that all the information I need is actually um, on the special joker that is prepared that comes with the mind power deck. So yeah. Speaking of the Mind Power deck as well, I'm really interested in the, the Mind Power deck that is released by Card Shark. Um, if you have that and if you think it's good, uh, please drop me a comment in the comment section down below and tell me whether it's worth the money.
Uh, if you haven't tried this sort of effect before, I urge you to try it, all right? Because there is, you know, I mean, yeah, it is strong when you have uh, a spectator pick a card from a deck and they, you know, you find their card. It is strong when you do a, a kind of a riffle peek thing and, you know, they say stop and then they look at a card and you tell them what a card is. But there is something that is really cool about just spreading out a deck and telling them to just think of a card, you know, from a spread of cards and then you're able to still tell them the card, right? It, it creates a different effect altogether and I think if you try out uh, either the Mind Power deck or Divine and Conquer, I think you'll be really surprised at the reaction. So I urge you to try it out uh, if you uh, haven't. All right, so that really is all I have to say about uh, Divine and Conquer. Very direct, clean effect. I do have a couple of uh, review videos that are lined up, a couple of review projects lined up. Uh, so do stay tuned for those. Uh, they'll be coming up really soon. All right, so till then, stay safe as always, take care and uh, magic on.